Hey everyone, I wanted to send this message to preview what, uh, one of the things that's going to be happening on today's Luminary Mastermind uh, stream, conversation at 4 o'clock Pacific time. Now for those of you not in the Luminary course, just check this out. This is very, very important information that we're, we're initially seeding within the Luminary course context, the Mastermind context, and we're going to be going forward on it because it's so important. So I want to want to share this document with you, which is a, the most powerful summary of how on the economic and financial side, the massive bribe has facilitated the scamdemic. OK, it's very, very critical. I can't say enough on how critical it, it is that we comprehend that this is all about money. It's all about business. The, the reason why it is still happening is because there are trillions of funds that are getting dispersed to all of the gatekeepers. Now, for the first time, because of researchers like Mandy Jacob, who is in the live stream in the Mastermind today at 4 p.m., and others like A.J. DePriest, who was recently on uh, the Dell Big Tree show Highwire, we now have uh, some actual uh, evidence and numbers of exactly how much. Uh, and you can look it up. You can you can you can find out how much um, COVID money is being used to bribe uh, uh, the officials and the, specifically the school boards and schools in your area. So let's go. Let's do this. Um, this is going to be talked about again, uh, one of the topics um, later today. So please, you know, if you're in the Luminary Mastermind, you're going to want to tune in for that. It's going to be uh, very, very key. So here's a five page document by A.J. DePriest of the TN Liberty Network. OK, so this is this is going to be you're, you're going to be hearing more and more about this. Uh, and here we go with a primer uh, in federal COVID relief funds to schools. This is pre presented in timeline fashion to illustrate how we got to the point where the federal government tricked our state government, state governments, into selling our kids to them for the price of cheap Chinese made masks and dangerous investigational COVID shots. OK, so this this is the, the the money trail. Follow the money. This is the crime, essentially, on the financial side of things. U.S. school board meetings are the new battleground for medical freedom. Prior to the COVID pandemic, par uh, parents rarely doubted the intentions of government-run schools regarding their children's health. It turns out they should have. Okay, and I'm going to put a link to the to the document. It's in our Dropbox. If you're in the Luminary Master Mastermind, it's in Week Five, and I'll just put a link. We'll just share it uh, openly here with our entire community. Um, it is time. I'll just kind of uh, read bits and pieces, but read the whole thing. It's it'll take five minutes. It's extremely powerful. It is time for every parent and every taxpayer to understand that school boards have no teeth. School boards are powerless over what is happening in America's government indoctrination camps. They know how cruel it is. OK, every school board has has has, you know, been hearing from parents. They know how cruel it is to mask, isolate, quarantine, test many, most of them, I would say, and contact, trace kids, all in the name of health and safety. They know the science, and they at least have been told the science behind masking children. Um, uh, well, they, they know that the science has crumbled, uh, like Anthony Fauci's credibility. If COVID accomplished anything in the, in the past two years, it opened our eyes to the stark reality that our government education system is a bloated bureaucratic babysitter with no accountability and no transparency. Okay, here is the real story of why COVID mandates are hurting children and destroying what little faith we have left in the uh, U.S. public school system. Okay, in 27 March 2020, okay, there's, there's ESSER, uh, ESSER funds and there's GEAR funds. The ESSER funds, uh, stand, that stands for the Emer Elementary and Secondary School Emergency Relief, ESSER. The GEAR funds, that stands for Governor's Emergency Education relief. We'll see exactly how much uh, these funds have been allocated here on this page and in the graph that follows. So these came from the CARES Act, which was already written in advance, March 2020. Um, we're going to set aside $2.3 trillion, and part of that is to, to pay off, to bribe uh, the, the entire school system at every level and make it conditional that they only get the funds if they follow the government mandates and all of the other BS. Okay, so three-layer shroud called the ESSER Fund to support K-12 through school reopenings and pandemic recovery. ESSER is the most money ever given to publication uh, education, 11 times more than annual Title I spending, five times more than total federal K-12 spending in 2019-2020. So ESSER 1, Phase 1, and you can read, read about it here, 
13.2 billion and then the gear uh 2.95 billion govern governor's uh emergency educational relief fund and it just increased it escalated now it's very important we see this um, requirements language, so compliance requirements language. And now this is throughout this. So basically, uh, they're laying the, the foundation here that they only get the funds if they comply. This is why you go talk to your uh, uh, elected reps or your school board or teachers or principals and they just they don't want to hear you because they're bound by money. Like literally this thing, that's what's driving this whole thing. SR2 uh, allocated on December 27, 2020. And um, let's see. And CRRSA in December 2020, Donald Trump signed the Coronavirus Response and Relief uh, Supplemental Appropriations Act, expanding COVID relief funding and an additional, uh, an additional 900 billion. The CRRSA Act gave K through 12 schools, another 54.3 billion under SR2 funds and 4 billion in, in, in uh, gear two funds. So this is only education. This is these, these are funds for only the schools. This isn't counting other government sectors and other bribes. Um, this brought total SR funds to 67 billion. Um, it released a government, uh, Department of Education released this handbook um, for states on February 12, 2021. Uh, and then the ARP Act was signed into law by Joe Biden on March 11, 2021. Another $1.9 trillion economic stimulus bill. You guys, th this is the reason. All of this nonsense of creating money from nothing is the reason why we're paying, you know, 50% more than for, for goods and services than we did just several years ago. This is, the, this is the cause of inflation. This is what happened in the Weimar Republic and, and Germany and history. Everybody knows that when you make print money out of nothing, cost uh, of everything goes up. And it's stealing. It's stealing from everyone. ESSER 3, on March uh, 24 of last year, this is the biggest one now. Um, by spring 2021, all ESSER funds were to be rewarded and any unused ESSER funds to be refunded to the Department of Education for reallocation. Okay, now, find, okay, interim final requirements. This is the stick that AJ calls. So basically, they, they say that they only get the money. Um, let's read that this here. The requirement clarifies that a local educational agency mu a plan must include how it will maintain the health and safety of students, educators, and other school and LEA staff, and the extent to which it has adopted policies and a description of any such policies on each of the CDC's safety recommendations, including, so recommendations, but they only get it if they follow the CDC's recommendations, including universal and correct wearing of masks, modifying facilities to allow for physical distancing, hand washing and respiratory etiquette, cleaning and maintaining healthy facilities, in, in, including improving ventilation, contact tracing, isolation, quarantine, diagnostic and screen testing, efforts to provide vaccinations to school communities. Efforts. Appropriate accommodations for children with disabilities and coordination with state and local health officials. Now, here's the numbers. Okay. CARES Act, within the CARES Act, which was $2.3 trillion created out of nothing that was written in advance of, of the pandemic, well, pandemic, the actual pandemic, uh, $13.2 billion uh, originally went to schools and then another 54.3 billion and then another 122 billion in, in uh, March 2021. So the total ESSER spending, just the ed education uh, spending, K through 12, to bribe the whole system in this country is 189.5 billion. This is way more than the, the stimulus funds from 2009, the, the era funds. Now read this. Now that we know the sleep-inducing details of how fast and loose our government behaves with our tax dollars, let's connect the dots between the most money ever doled out to schools by the federal government and the real issue, our children's health, and why schools continue to push COVID mandates as if COVID is a life-threatening illness that can only be assaged with draconian measures like masks and quarantines. Have we seen the tip of the iceberg or is there something worse under the surface? So think about this. If COVID was such a deadly disease that 
cheap surgical masks made in China are the only way to keep kids uh, in school safe. Why is there not a single OSHA related or regulated hazardous waste disposal bin anywhere in this whole thing? Why aren't kids and teachers required to change their mask and dispose of them per OSHA requirements for an hour and a half? Why aren't hazmat bins being collected uh, if all of this is real? It's not about health. It's not real. It's compliance and it's it's communism. It's getting uh, changing completely the value system into compliance. And uh, what it's doing to our kids is absolutely criminal. The answer is simple. COVID is not deadly, especially to children. School boards know it. Our mayors and governments know it. Governors know it. Our Department of Education know it. ESSER and GEAR funds are the carrot for schools to collect millions in COVID relief money. But these funds also carry a very big stick. They have to comply to get the money. And all 50 states are holding our kids ransom for money. Okay, so we're going to be following this this through and going deeper on this. Look at this. This is another document that's in the the Luminary Mastermind Dropbox for week five. This is just for California. This data is available for all states. Look at this. This is just ESSER three just for California. This is only the third phase of bribery uh, funding for the education system, COVID money, uh, and it's just for uh, California. I looked at this. Uh, a short time ago, uh, my friend, our friend Mike Winner, he's in Del Norte County. And for example, the schools there are getting $9.6 million. It's a small county, right? Look at all these, these lines, hundreds and hundreds of, of lines of, of payoffs here. And only three to Del Norte. But $9.6 million just to the schools and only if they follow the CDC recommendations okay and if you go go down to the bottom here we see that just for the ESSER 3 just for the third phase the total amount look I have to make it wider to even show that number is 9.4 billion in California to schools so there we go we're gonna dive into this uh, we're learning how to combine uh, activism and love right being and doing um, so many uh, overlaps of, of consciousness in action are, are happening. New paradigms. We're being challenged at a, at a fundamental level. And, you know, like many of you, it's just been super, super intense. Things are dissolving and kind of fragmenting on the, on the outside. We're being called to the, to the inner work. And at the same time, we're being called to speak the truth and to say no to what is ha causing harm egregiously to us, our communities, and our kids. So uh, we invite you again to this conversation. Share that information. Share those links. Get involved on this whole accountability level because this is just the reason why I'm actually really excited about this. It's not because just knowing this and then, oh, look at what they're doing. It's because we are learning um, individually and as a community powerful mechanisms to hold accountable those actors that are, that are causing harm. And, and this, knowing how much all of these agencies and the individual men and women, and that's important, as men and women, right, um, holding them accountable as men and women, knowing how much they're getting paid to, to do these acts or to, to toe the line, this is a powerful uh, point of leverage along with, with things like notices of liability, with, with things like... Um, going after bonds, insurance bonds. We're seeing this more and more. It's like organizations have, have figured this out and we're gonna continue this conversation. Risk management, liability, insurance. This is, this is uh, causing, starting to cause direct results in cities, uh, counties, school boards, and even states now, and even entire countries, right? Saying we're not gonna do it anymore. The reason why they're not gonna do it anymore is because the people are implementing actual measures of heart-centered, truth-centered, love-centered liability to say, no, we're not, gonna, we're not gonna do that anymore. And I'm gonna hold this mirror up to you and, and show you what you're doing. And that's my boundary, so no more. So we invite you to the Luminary Call uh, this afternoon and love you guys. Share this video if you find it helpful. Be part of the chat. We'd love to know your, your, your feedback um, as, we, as we go forward. Thanks, peace.